thank you, Marnie, so much for accepting the invitation to this uh, Coast to Coast interview to give uh, uh, awareness uh, to other dermatologists across Canada, what's going on in your province and in your city and with yourself in terms of dermatology. And we'd like to hear, um, learn how you got into dermatology in the first place and where you trained and what Fantastic. kind of things you like in dermatology. Thank you. So I, I'm very passionate about my career. I, I love being a dermatologist and I always really enjoy encouraging uh, the medical students and residents uh, in, in terms of uh, skin awareness. Um, and my, my story is an interesting one. It's, it's a bit of a unique one. Um, medicine in my family is a family business. It wasn't, was I going to be a doctor? It was what kind of doctor was I going to be? And I always knew that's what I was going to be. And I was very science oriented. And um, I won't say I was the first dermatologist in my family, and not many people know that. Um, in uh, I, I grew up very close to my grandparents, and uh, my grandparents um, were both Holocaust survivors, and they actually immigrated to Canada in 1956 uh, after the time of the Hungarian Revolution. And my grandparents actually came with my grandmother's uncle, and they used to call him Uncle Ducky. But Uncle Ducky was actually a dermatologist from Hungary. And at that time, he practiced not just dermatology, but a lot of uh, syphilology, it was called. And growing up, although he, he did pass away when I was quite young, um, I heard a lot of stories. And I think it really imprinted on my mind. Um, and so with that background, I entered medical school with a father who was a surgeon and a brother who went into surgery. But always I was interested in skin and I had the great fortune of having uh, met Dr. Toole, Jack Toole, who's a past CDA president. And he greatly impacted on my life. He showed me the love of skin. And um, from there, um, I knew dermatology was my passion. And it was interesting because at that time, and currently too in Manitoba, we had a, a, a significant um, person power issue in terms of dermatology, very underserviced province in terms of dermatologists. And so both myself and Dr. Toole, we actually at that time, I was a medical student at the time, met with uh, Gary Philman, who was our premier, and said, we really have a problem in Manitoba there are a lack of dermatologists. And from there became our first residency program in dermatology. And I was the first resident. I, had wow. to, I did have to compete for the spot. Wow. And it comes full circle. Um, I had a marvelous beginning to my career. I practiced with Dr. Toole, who was my mentor. Um, I subsequently have been in my own practice now uh, for almost eight years. And um, now I'm program director of a residency program um, that another one uh, that we have uh, uh, in affiliation, I was at University of British Columbia, and now we have a program in affiliation with University of Toronto. So it's kind of come full circle uh, right. and it's, it's tremendously exciting. So you get a uh, residence in dermatology from UBC as well as Toronto? That no, so when, when I was training and it was yes. a program where one resident came in every year, or actually at that time it was every second year. And we did our first two years in Manitoba and then the last three years at UBC. Right. And okay. currently in Manitoba, there are a number of us who are graduates from that program. After a while it ended and there was uh -huh. a big hiatus. And now we have, uh, I've initiated a new residency uh, program in con in conjunction with University of Toronto and okay. we've just matched our second resident so we have two residents they spend the first two years in Manitoba the last three years at University of Toronto super wow and we're really hoping that it's going to address our our uh, person power issue here because really we um, have long wait lists um, we are seeing patients um that are uh, fairly sick patients and we just need more dermatologists here. Right, and do these people uh, sign like a contract to come back and practice in Manitoba? 
Yes, there is a return for service agreement associated with the residency spot. Okay, okay. Wow, and um, so how many dermatologists are there in Manitoba? You know, that's a good question and I would have to count. Um, I would say there's about a dozen of us. Okay, my goodness. And um, most of you are in Winnipeg itself? Yes, we're all yeah. in Winnipeg with the exception yeah. of Dr. Sneath, who is in Brandon. Um, also, Dr. Fudge does practice uh, in uh, Steinbeck. Okay. And so you have the university program where you do teaching of the residents in dermatology, but also <laughs> other, other specialties like family medicine, pediatrics, internists that come Correct. and do rotations with you? Yeah, and it's not just me, but um, yes, so um, I hold two academic positions at the university. So I'm actually section head of dermatology. And that was a, a title that Dr. Toole held before me for decades. Um, and I'm also program director of the new residency program. Uh, and really, there's a lot of teaching involved, but um, we have, I have all the time coming to my practice residents and medical students. And also um, our section is also, so do, does didactic teaching to the second year medical students as well. So there's right. a lot of academics, there's a lot of teaching, but it's actually, none of it's done from the hospital. It's all done from private practice, actually. Really? One, of my, one of my mandates as section head is I'd really like to return some of dermatology to the hospital. Right. Um, and I think that would be very nice. Years ago, many of us practiced from the hospital and there's been a gradual movement away, but it would be nice to return some of um, the practicing dermatologists to a hospital practice. Right. And so what are your, I understand that you do research also, as well as your teaching, as well as your clinical practice. So how do you balance all of that and, and make uh, that work as well as the uh, family balance. You know, there's, there's, you know, so much um, excitement in dermatology. So I have a lot of things that I do. So I have a very busy clinical practice. I'm involved in the Canadian Dermatology Association. I've been involved uh, very early. So even in my residency, I won actually a CDA bursary that really, it did show me how um, it gave me an opportunity to go away and actually do some um, extra uh, residency training. Um, and actually, I have to say for my whole career, I've been involved in the CD in one way or another. Um, I'm involved now in the position of um, sun awareness, and I've been for so many years. Uh -huh. um, and uh, even, you know, even the CDA provides so much important information to patients. And I always tell the younger dermatologists, it's an incredibly important organization for us as Canadian dermatologists. Um, and for me, it's been good also, you know, to get educational information, to attend um, educational seminars. We get um, tremendous um, uh, information, not just in the, the journals, but there's podcasts, there's so many opportunities, but also there's the concept of meeting your colleagues and talking to your colleagues and forming those connections so that if I have a question, if I, if I want to talk about a patient or I want to talk about something, even office related, I know somebody and I can call somebody. And that's for me, very important. Mm -hmm. um, but in my practice, so I have my clinical practice, I have an aesthetic practice. Um, I have my academic practice. And I actually also have my research practice. And I have a affiliation with Probity Medical Research. And uh -huh. we do a tremendous number of clinical trials. And I love it. Because yeah. we've, you know, done clinical trials now, I, I started them actually uh, back uh, when I worked uh, with Jack Tool and Michael Sheps. And I continued it when I moved into my own practice. Uh -huh. And we do clinical trials, everything from topical new topical therapies that are in development to systemic therapies. So for example, JAX now um, are available for the treatment of atopic dermatitis, but boy, I've been working with JAX for a number of years. So yeah, that's they're not new great. to me. It's, it's just really exciting. And to be able to um, bring them to patients uh, is, it's really fantastic. I've, I've really in, enjoyed working in, in clinical trials.
That's uh, great to be on the forefront of uh, therapeutics and, and to be comfortable with them. And uh, that's, that's a very exciting part of your practice, I'm sure. And um, for, for you in Manitoba, I guess the, how, how is dermatology delivered to most patients? Uh, do they get referred through their GP? And um, how, how do you manage with the, so the waiting lists you have? Yeah, so dermatology is exclusively referral uh, in Manitoba um, for the first visit. And then of course, we'll longitudinally follow our patients as long as appropriate. Um, Unfortunately, there are long waiting lists for everybody, um, long waiting lists, and uh, we try to uh, deal with them as, as best as possible by triaging the patients that have the most serious problems by sometimes doing like I have like a, for example, a, a specialty clinic I do in, in psoriasis, I have some acne clinics just to kind of weed off those patients to be more efficient, right. the delivery of care, you know, if somebody has a suspicious lesion for melanoma or like they don't wait, but right. it's difficult when you're seeing a patient and the waiting list is 18 months and actually right. even up to two years. Um, so there's also an on-call service we have, and there's four of us who participate in that. Mm -hmm. And it's a great service. We actually um, rotate throughout the month. And so we provide on-call dermatology service to all of Manitoba, Western Ontario, Nunavut and parts of actually uh, Eastern Saskatchewan. And uh, so that way I like being on call, even though I'm on call tomorrow and I know you get many, many, many phone calls. Right. <laughs> and so we actually do a stretch at a time. It's, it's quite busy, but right. it's a great way to keep acute dermatology really, um, you know, uh, you keep my kind of skills in acute dermatology really uh, sharp. Uh, right. So that's when I would see, you know, I just saw a few weeks ago, a really serious case of TEN. And, you know, when you see your, your dress and when you see your acute immunobullus. And so um, I really enjoy being on call uh, because that's where the, that with those big wait lists, that's right. where those acute dermatology patients are seen. And then we also do in-hospital phone uh, calls. We'll go into hospital to see patients like on the bone marrow transplant ward or um, surgical problems and that kind of stuff as well. And also I have to say, I think it's important to have a physical presence too. So people can see us, um, the dermatologists were attending um, to our patients in hospital. Um, and I think that visual uh, presence of the dermatologist in, is also very important as well. Sure, that we can be a part of the team of looking Absolutely. after complex care patients and uh, we're more regular, we are, we're very lucky and Quebec, they've allowed us to stay at the University of Montreal in the, the hospital setting. And it's, it's so helpful to patients that have complex care because they're going from one specialist to the next in the same building. So, and are you using telemedicine also? So the, I think one of the maybe only positive things about the pandemic has yeah. been uh, the delivery of, of virtual care. Um, there is a, a telemedicine service in Manitoba live, but it's not very effective. Um, so many of us will do a store and forward um, telemedicine with photos, um, but that to the extent it, it's allowed us to actually, for example, much more so of course for um, inflammatory disease than for yes. neoplastic to provide care. We, we see people all the way up to Nunavut. So um, right. to, to deliver some care, but, um, I, I do believe it needs to be better. It needs right. to be better. Yeah, we all need to check how we're doing and and uh, use each other's lessons well, and so that we provide the best care of dermatology in Canada that we can, for sure. And um, if you were counseling a, a younger person in dermatology, what would you suggest or some important advice to give to people? I've always loved my career. Um, I truly think that dermatology is the best specialty in the world. And I, I 
I can't say that when I have another specialty resident come in, but I can say <laughs> that to the dermatologists. Um, I, I think it's so unique to have a specialty where you can um, have very complex patients and then not the right. very aged and the neonate yes. um, where we have a specialty, we have the technical and then you don't have to have technical skills. It's so broad. You can yeah. have visits that are prolonged and then also visits that are very short. So it you will never be bored in what we do. It's a mm -hmm. very um, dynamic specialty that can be molded to the individual and the individual's personality. Right. I also think in medicine, having an important work-life balance is very important. Um, dermatology is an incredibly busy career. And I think that it's very important to allow oneself to have a work-life balance in whatever way that that's important. I think medicine as a whole, people, I've seen my friends, I've seen my colleagues burn out. And that starting from the beginning to allow oneself time for oneself, even in a very busy career, allow oneself to have time for your friends, for your family, for your children, to allow yourself an overall happiness, not just in your career, but in your life. And mm -hmm. I think looking back, I think I did that very well. And mm -hmm. I don't, wouldn't change, wouldn't change anything. And how would you um, manage all that? Would you, do you think it's because you surround yourself with good people and uh, both at home and, and as well as at work? I think a lot of it has to do with delegation at the office. Mm -hmm. So I'm a good delegator at the office. I do what I do well. And that is, I could see my patients, but I have a great office manager who does the staff. Um, I, uh, have a, I have a great support system at the home, a marvelous spouse. I have great children um, and help at home to help me do the things I need to do at home. Right. So it allows me time to participate in the activities. Um, right that I want to do. So uh, I don't, I won't say I never miss anything I don't want to miss, but it's really the exception rather than the rule. Yes. Okay. Well, that's, that's good advice for people going forward. And at any point in our career, I think we sometimes need to reevaluate where we're at and make sure that we're keeping a proper balance because we could work all the time and uh, even weekends and <laughs> evenings yeah. and, yeah. And, and actually, um, when I first started practicing, you know, I had paper charts and it was way easier to leave the paper chart at the office. But now with EMR, we can log in anywhere yes. and it's so easy to log in and go, OK, okay I just want to do this. Oh, I just going to empty my inbox. And it's we have to say, no, I'm just going to not do that. I'll do that at the office or I'll designate X time to do that. And um it's, it's, a, it's a definite thing one has to set your mind to do. And, and I found over time, I have become even better at doing that and allowing uh, time for what I want to do. So it's, 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 it's a, an you. important thing to grow and learn. Right, right. It, it is tough. So um, what sort of challenges do you see going forward uh, in dermatology and how can we make a uh, our specialty viable and, and meaningful within our communities and within Canada? I think that um, having a group like the CDA is very important because together a collective voice is very important. And uh, we're a strong and, and clever group of individuals who together um, uh, with as a CDA and as a group, um, it, it's, it's an important voice of the dermatologists of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of changes happening in healthcare in Canada and, and they worry me a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think as a dermatologist group, a lot of things are being um, taken away from us in some ways. You know, um, I talked about my, my grandmother's uncle and how he was a dermatologist and syphilologist. Well, there aren't too many syphilologists anymore. And you know, the truth is 
much of genital disease is skin. Well, I say, why aren't we syphilologists anymore? And then what more is being taken away from us? Well, we have Mohs surgery. I don't want that taken away from us. You know, we have um, allergic skin disease. Is that going to be taken away by allergists? We have atopic dermatitis allergists I know want a piece of the pie. It's not that they can't have any, but really, to, in my opinion, atopic dermatitis is a disease of the skin. It's a disease. We are skin experts. That's a disease that dermatologists should manage. So right. I think that, um, and and I think that there also is a threat that, that um, my, much of family medicine also wants to um, manage skin disease. So I think that we have to continue to, express and um, firmly stand that we are the skin experts and this is the domain in which we have our expertise and we're not going away. And as a group, we have to collect together in Canada and express that, I I believe. Right, right. And I'd I'd like to see us uh, support the public health care system too, because we're getting in in Quebec, we have uh, about... uh, 10% of our dermatologists are now private. And uh, I think that suits the government a little bit because then they're not having to pay for those visits. But on the other hand, uh, that's 10% less available to the public system. So that's very interesting because um, private healthcare is not an option in Manitoba at all. I don't think uh, in other provinces either, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, going forward, I, it's wonderful to have you on board, Marnie. Every time I see you at a meeting, I, you just radiate uh, your, the joy that you've been expressing. And uh, it's really uh, a privilege to have you uh, practicing dermatology and uh, anybody watching you would want to do the same. Thank you so much. It's yeah. tremendous to have you as our president. And I, I really appreciate the interview today. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.